joining me on this class. Today we are going to look at sets. A set is a collection of well-defined objects. A set is a collection of well-defined objects. The objects are called elements of the set. The objects are called elements of the set. A set is usually written with a capital letter and the elements of the set are written with small letters. Is the elements of the set are separated with commas and they are enclosed in coily brackets. If M is a set and A is an element of M, then we write A belongs to M. That is, A belongs to M means that A is an element of M or A is a member of set M. But if A is not an element of M, then we will write A is not an element of M. That is how to write it. Now, let's look at how to specify sets. There are two ways of specifying sets. One is by listing and two is by set builder notation. Now, let's look at listing. In listing, in listing, we have a set, let's say A, and the elements of the set are all going to be written one after the other. Here, set A is the set which contains the elements A, B, C, D, E. And the second method, which is by set builder notation in this second method the characteristic which describes the elements of the set is written down for instance if we have a set s we can write s as the set of all y such that y is an even integer y is an even integer and y is greater than zero so we have written this set not by listing the elements that belong to the set but by writing the characteristic which describes the elements of the set now we can write out the elements of this set. This set is going to be equal to y is an even integer. We will write all the even integers that are greater than 0. We will start with 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. So that is the set builder notation. Next, we'll look at finite and infinite sets. If, if a set contains n different elements, if a set contains n different elements, where n is some positive integer then the set is said to be finite if otherwise if otherwise then it is infinite if a set contains n different elements where n is a positive integer, then that set is said to be a finite set. But if otherwise, then the set is an infinite set. 
Now let's go to equality of sets. Equality of sets. If you have two sets, A and B, and those two sets consist of the same elements, then we say that those two sets are equal. If two sets A and B, if two sets A and B consists consists of consists of the same elements. Then we say that they are equal. This means that all the elements in set A can be found in set B. And all the elements in set B can equally be found in set A. Now, let's look at an example. Set A is equal to the set that contains the elements 3, 2, 1. While set B is the set that contains the elements 1, 2, 3. If you look at these two sets, you see that they are equal because set A and set B have the same elements 1, 2, 3. The order in which the elements are written is not important in this case. They can be written in any order, but as long as they are the same elements, then the two sets are equal. Okay, now let's look at what we call the singleton sets. Singleton sets. A singleton set. A singleton set is a set which contains only one element. For example, set S has just one element in it. We say that it is a singleton set. A set with only one element is called a singleton set. Next, we will look at the empty sets. The empty sets, which is also called the null sets, is a set which contains no elements. A set which contains no elements. If a set has no element, that set is said to be an empty set. The empty set is represented by this symbol or it can equally be represented by this symbol. So that is how to write the empty set. Now let's look at one example of an empty set. If we have a set A, a set A, which is the set of all x such that x squared is equal to 4 and x is odd. This set is an empty set. Why? Because there is no odd number that when you square it, you will get 4. That is why the set is an empty set. Now, we are going to look at subsets. If every element of set A is an element of set B, then A is called a subset of B. Or we say that B contains A. 
we write this as A is a subset of B. Or we write it as B contains A. If A is not a subset of B, then we will write A is not a subset of B. That is how to write A is not a subset of B. Okay. Now let's look at a few examples on subsets. If we have a set A with the elements 1, 3, 5, and another set B with the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Since all the elements in set A can be found in set B, we say that A is a subset of set B. Another one, if you have a set S1 with the elements 1, 2, 3, up to 9, and S2 with the elements 1, 3, 5, S3 with the elements 9, 5, 11. Here, S2 is a subset of S1 because the elements 1, 3, 5 can be found in set S1, while S3 is not a subset of S1. Now let's look at the universal sets. All sets in a particular discussion are subsets of a fixed set called the universal set. The universal set is denoted by U. And in every discussion about sets, we always assume that there is a universal set and all sets under consideration are subsets of the universal set. We may have different universal sets for different discussions. Now let's look at a simple example. We have a set U with the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. We have another set A containing 1, 3, 5, 7. And set B containing the elements 1, 2, 3, 4. Set C containing the elements 7, 8, and 9. Here, set A is a subset of the universal set. Set B is also a subset of the universal set. Likewise, set C is a subset of the universal set. The reason is that all the elements found in these sets, A, B, and C, can be found in the universal sets. I hope you have understood our discussion on sets so far. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. Thank you for watching.